What I'd like to discuss today is how we can incorporate the entire neck of the guitar into a nice, powerful blues solo. I think the nicest way to do that is to string together two of our most useful blues fingering configurations. So I'm just going to hover here on this G7 chord, and let's see what I come up with. So that's just a very simple sort of out of time rubato section on one chord, and that chord was G7. Let's look at a couple things I did here. These are all components that I'm stringing together from solid guitar, and I will put the links here to two places I really want you to focus on, which is Charlie's Five Solid Licks, which discusses some cliche, uh, really powerful blues phrases up and down the neck, and also my ideas on how to organize minor pentatonic scales. So the first thing we did was we focused in this area that we're very familiar with, which is sort of our typical minor pentatonic scale configuration. Notice I always end on the root. I don't play this note a lot when I'm drilling the scale because I want to end and begin on the root. So I have a real firm idea of where that most important note is. The next configuration we're going to look at is an inversion much higher on the neck. If I'm only going to play from root to root, I'm going to omit string six. I'm going to omit string one. So here's what I have. Starting on string five, I have my third finger on the G. I'm now in eighth position. But my first note, G, the root, is with finger three. The flat third, the four, the five, flat seven, one. So this configuration, in its most pure sense, only incorporates one octave, covers the territory of only one octave. The amazing thing about this higher inversion of the scale is all of the great solid licks I can build off of these notes. So I have the root, the flat three, the four, the five. That itself is a very powerful blues lick. And now if I want to go back down to the root, I can do a... So what I did there was a turn. So I did an embellishment of the note 4, landing on flat 3, an embellishment of the root 1, landing on flat 7, and back up to the root. So, in order to really build a nice, convincing, short solo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in the lower position on the neck, and I'm going to end up here in the higher position. So just off the top of my head... And then to build excitement, we're going to move up. So a good way to think about the sort of the arc of your solo, the development, the tension and resolution, the suspension resolution, the tension and release in your solo is to think about just sticking to these two very powerful um, core scale configurations. There's one last thing that I'd like to show you also, and that is stringing together two much higher positions. This is what I call... Um, solid licks number three. And again, all the links are listed here in the description. But basically what you have is this. You have the same notes of your typical minor pentatonic scale configuration here starting on a string five. Again, in order to end on the root, we have to move up a whole step here and play our G note here. In order to play a nice flowing multi-position minor pentatonic scale, 
we're simply taking two notes and playing them on different strings. So if here's my G7 chord, my minor pentatonic scale is fingers 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 4, and then slide up to 1. And this is a configuration that everybody is very familiar with. What we're going to do is play this note on string 5 here on string 4. We're going to play this note, the 5th, which usually occurs on string one, and we're going to play it on string two. So here's what you get. As I said, we're going to start with finger three. Now you have the flat third. You're going to move up to the four. So this is the same as this, except we're playing this second note here on string four. Now I'm back to my tenth position. All of this is the same. What I want to do here is I'm going to take the note D, which typically would occur on string one, and I'm going to play it here on string two. So. so when I get here to string two, I have my typical finger two, finger four, and now I want to slide up playing the note D, which allows me to play these two highest notes on string one. Basically, A good way to look at it is on the even numbered strings, I'm going to play two notes. On the odd number strings, I'm going to play three notes. Other way around. Odd number strings, I'm playing the root. Even number strings, I'm playing three notes. The note flat three, four, and five. And I have to use my first finger to slide up. Here again, an odd number string, two notes, an even number string, three notes, an odd number string, two notes.